Good day folks, today is Saturday, Saturday the 25th, I come from a different setup, uh, that's my dad, uh, I guess when he got commissioned in 1947, and let's talk Turkey, not Turkey really, let's talk the world, what's happening, let's, I mean, I'll, I'll do a little bit on, 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 uh, Hamas and Israel and then go on to a little bit on the next big topic before going on to slightly the outer periphery where all the actions been but obviously a lot of people in India are not being focused on that. First thing great news was Hamas releases 24 hostages on the first day of Gaza truce and let me just tell you this is 24 and 36 Palestinians have also been released. So all this bloodletting eventually has resulted in this. Uh, there is no end game in sight yet, uh, but everywhere we can see now what what is happening is whether it's the in, whether it's India, whether it's the United States, or the rest of the world is this is back again. India reiterates two state solution for Gaza crisis, and so does the rest of the world. And this was already on the plate, and this is something Netanyahu, uh, because of he needs the support of the the, the ultra right, uh, we we'll call the Zionists and the Zionists in Israel, uh, decided to up the ante and reduce the area available. That's what this was all about, right? And then right after that, I play this Qatar court accepts plea against death penalty. Now Qatar, critical player in the release of this hostages, critical player for the United States in in Venezuela and bringing bringing them together is going to be a critical player now, folks, for the release of these prisoners, or at least, I mean, at least getting the death penalty off, right? The rest of the world is getting angry, right? In South Africa, MPs vote for closing Israeli embassy cutting ties. China welcomes Arab ministers for talks to end war. Urgent need to ensure relief reaches Gaza hostage taking unacceptable, says Jay Shankar. And Arab foreign ministers to visit New Delhi this week also for the same talks. India tells BRICS meet to seriously address Palestinian concerns. Patient staff leave Gaza hospital. Israeli strikes kill 47 in the south. So I got this lovely article which says how Europe lost its, uh, its forward-looking nature after Auschwitz and Germany because it looked the other way. And But just remember one thing, right? Whether it's the Europe, whether it's the United States, whether it's the UK, anti-Semitism continues to thrive. Let me just tell you, folks, the biggest, the, the two people that Trump's followers, where Christianity is taking hold, ultra-right Christianity, the two people that are in the crosshairs are the, the, the black Americans and African Americans and guess what, the Jews, right? So it's not all hunky-dory. Israel military releases video it shows hostages at Al Shifa and India Israel which wants India to bear Hamas proscribes LET ahead of 15th anniversary of 2611. Israel designates LET as a terror group without Indian request. So here this I've got a lot of guys jumping up and down Hamas Hamas Hamas. Hey, I'm asking these guys, right? Why haven't we declared Hamas a terrorist organization. Tell me, right? But in the end, persecutions parallel lines. Zionism was one response to the centuries-old oppression faced by Jews. Like many such responses across cultures, the decided assertiveness is a better option than assimilation. And let me tell you about Zionists, right? The ultra-right, they don't fight wars. They let somebody else do them. They are not enrolled in the IDF, folks. So they are doing, they are forcing somebody else to take on the mantle while they hunker down and enjoy themselves and grab territory. That's what they're all about, right? And it tells me of a bird that does the same thing, right? The West must re revisit policy of Israel's war as Atul Mishra writes. He says it's difficult to assess to what extent and in what ways Israel would have used its firepower differently had it not had Western support. But we can be sure that Western backing has given Israel a considerable measure of impunity. The overall global geopolitical picture therefore remains unaffected because not changed much after this war. The, the, while the U.S. moved its uh, uh, firepower in, it was only to avoid Iran getting in. It is noteworthy that perhaps never before have the U.N. and other humanitarian agencies working on the ground in Palestine questioned Israel action and contested its narrative of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict with such forthrightness. Okay, 
for all those guys, I know that they keep, every time I say this, they come and say, oh, do you believe the New York Times? Do you believe the UN? We actually, most of the people don't believe anybody, right? But this is a moment for the West to ask if it should allow its values, reputation and interest to be asked in such fashion to provide cover to actions marked by staggering disproportionateness and contempt for basic norms of international life and religion has nothing to do with it. For all those guys who come back at me on this. Third, the unraveling of nearly 15 years of progress in relations between the West and the Muslim world is all shattered. Then you have this. The West have begun to undo this achievement. Yes, Hamas action were barbaric. Yes, Israel has the right to defend itself. Yes, the American response has been nuanced relative to the past, cautioning Israel against expelling Palestinians from Gaza, considering humanitarian concerns and foregrounding the two-state solution. But all of this dwarfs before the scale of destruction, death and suffering that Israel has meted out to the Palestinians. Okay, Now, folks, like I said, Canada is out there. Canada is back in play, right? And this time, where the indictment in the U.S. and the closed envelope against somebody in India. Ooh, ha! That's what it's all about. U.S. thwarted plot to kill Panu. Report got input on terror crime. Nexus says MEA, Niger versus Panu. India's response to U.S. and Canada via the dead different because the U.S. has us. <laughs> well, all those people who don't like to believe it, you better believe this, right? Working with U.S. and India, Trudeau on Pannu report, all right. Sealed indictment filed against at least one in plot to kill Pannu. In diplomatic thaw, India resumes e-visa services Canadians right after the indictment, folks. Right after the indictment. So anybody who thought and believed, oh, India is going to stand up and fight. Jay Shankar is going to stand up and fight. Not going to happen, folks. Not going to happen. After two months, India resumes e-visa for Canadians. Space given by Canada to radicals, key issue, Australia troll. That is true. Criminal terrorist nexus inputs from US taken seriously, says India. The then you have this Barkha. It really makes no sense what she says, right? The curious case of Pannu and the US response is something about the Khalistani leader story that leaves more questions than answers. And India is entitled to express anger, anger over those who threaten its people. I'm sorry, Barkha. You're flying a kite. No, when I read her something, I think she doesn't know what she's talking about. Right? It's just the same BS rewritten. Okay. Anyway, what's happening, folks, is the ASEAN. Where the play is at? China sends ASEAN message. Do not take sides. Avoid block over conflicts. On ASEAN's plate at Gurjeet Singh, right? Indonesian presidency kept summit on key evil level. But China remains a challenge. Myanmar crisis puts ASEAN's irrelevance on display. This is one thing that's done that. China warns of new Cold War, US-backed blocks in Asia. North and South, East versus West. This is what Raja Mohan right? East Asia summit in Jakarta and the G20 summit in Delhi highlight the irreversible crisis in the old multilateral order. India, though, is shaping the new regional and global frameworks, as sure as part of it. In the 90s, Moscow persuaded Delhi to join hands with Beijing in promoting a multipolar world that would counter American unilateralism. This core principle of India's post-Cold War multilateralism has begun to unravel as economic and security threats mounted from China. The problem for Delhi, it became increasingly clear, was from a unipolar Asia dominated by Beijing rather than a unipolar world led by the US. An expansive and positive US engagement with India aided this profound shift in Delhi perspective. Hallelujah, folks. Hallelujah. China on mind, PM says, law apply to all in Indo-Pacific flags, territorial integrity. PM urges ASEAN unity on territorial disputes. PM likely to focus on territorial integrity, freedom of navigation. India, ASEAN agreed to wrap up trade pact review in 2025. At ASEAN meet Rajnath, bats for freedom on international waters. Sea change in waters, right? Pranab Dalsamta. Real geopolitics. Dynamics accompanied by deeper conversation with Quad countries allowed ASEAN to evolve their position independently. He says, what ASEAN has achieved with endorsements from EES, which will be that East Asian Seas, which will be formalized at the leader meet in September, is crafting a way to explore possibilities with Quad and thus the Indo-Pacific. On the other hand, deepening engagement with ASEAN could provide Quad with a more meaningful economic agenda adding heft to its security profile. And the US was doing its bit too, right? 
Vietnam and US deepen ties amid mutual unease of China. Eye on China, US and Vietnam sign historic partnership after Biden lands. Vietnam, US strengthen diplomatic ties. Philippines is the other new kid on the block. India, US, Philippines, the trilateral. Philippines invites neighbors to frame South China, China seek conduct rules. China, Philippines accuse each other in collision in South China, in South China Sea, rebuffed by China, Marcos takes a tougher line, adhere to international law, rule-based order, India amid China, Philippine Rao, carefully watching docking of Chinese ship in Columbus and then So this is the important part, folks. India has come out on side of the Philippines. Not only that, the South China Sea, the Philippines Navy and the US Navy are patrolling them together. With the ship, with a snip of a rope, the Philippines elevate Resistance to China, Philippines allies start naval drills amid tensions in Asia Pacific. The other place where the US is putting a charm offensive. India, Indonesia proposes critical mineral trade deal with the US. Biden strengthens ties with Indonesia despite tensions over war in Gaza. And as Manjari Chatterjee writes, Quad and ASEAN must learn to work together. But what I like is this article. India is becoming a power in Southeast Asia. New Delhi and his partners are inching together to balance Beijing's aggressive posture, written by Derek Grossman in a foreign policy report. Says, the moment has been long in coming, but India is turning into a strategic actor in South Asia, Southeast Asia. Amid a flurry of regional diplomacy, India has sealed an arms deal with Vietnam, sided with the Philippines over China on sovereignty disputes in the South China Sea, and enhanced defense cooperation with Indonesia. And even though the United States and its our uh, Asian tre uh, treaty allies are not involved. India's moves raises the tantalizing possibility that it will increasingly complement the United States Indo-Pacific strategy to counter China in the coming years. It is balance of power politics worthy of an international relations textbook. China's aggressive posture is driving India and its Southeast Asian partners together. Hallelujah, folks. Great work here, right? Then you have Biden declares a new era of partnership with South Korea and Japan. Now, where Japan and South Korea, right? US, Japan and South Korea to enter into security pact for the Pacific. US, Japan, South Korea cement duty to consult pledge China objects. But then Seoul and Delhi are doing it, right? Japan and Delhi have already done it. Seoul and Delhi, new partners in Indo-Pacific. He says, the India conversation in the power corridors of Seoul is increasingly gaining traction as New Delhi finds space in President Yoon Suk Yeol's key policy documents. While India is mapped as a key regional strategic partner in the NSS document, the Indo-Pacific strategy identifies India as a leading regional partner with shared values. Okay. Quad humming. Biden Modi talks tomorrow. India looks to invite Quad leaders to Republic Day. Indo-Pacific is separate construct. Quad the way forward, says Jay Shankar. Quad naval drill of Sydney this week, which happened. India seeks easier visa, faster mobility to Australia. China looming large. India and Australia crank up defense partnership in 2 plus 2 discuss. Uh, Indo-Pacific strategy. India, Australia on hold 2 plus 2 talks in capital on Monday. India, Australia talks focus on, reg on defense, regional security. Moving to improve ties, Australia and China initiate high-level talks with after three years. This is what's happening there, but India is moving fast forward. India slams, uh, Australia slams China over unprofessional naval interaction. Uh, interaction. Australia, Brazil to grow arhar for India. All right. India must be prepared, folks, for a conflict over Taiwan. This is the important part, even though we think it's far away, even though we are giving a wide pass to China on this. But Harsh Panth writes, New Delhi must face the political and military consequences, consequences of a hot war over Taiwan. It should be least start talking to Quad partners about its constraints and their expectation. It should formulate policy on a simple maxim, help other, others proportionate to the help one expects. New Delhi must contribute to Quad's effort to keep Taiwan free in the way it expects, expects support in case of a military confrontation with Beijing over the Himalayas. This is not to say that a war is imminent. It is just to underscore that New Delhi's strategic horizons should include the changing power balance in the Taiwan Straits and prepare accordingly. While we are doing that, India plans Taiwan labels supply pack while China tensions grew. 
Hello Tata, goodbye Western Anatomy of a Takeover Deal. This is Tata taking over a Taiwanese company. Vice President of Taiwan on way to US for sensitive trip. Taiwan needs new energy strategy report says. Top US general seeks faster Taiwan arms sales. US announces military aid package for Taiwan amid tensions with China. And what does my favorite Arun Prakash, comment Arun Prakash say? Former defense chief visits to Taiwan signals mutuality of interest must not be over it, but it should not be under it also. Because why? While the Sino-Pakistan military nexus will ensure that India has its hands full on land and sea, the compact uh, but robust Indian Navy remains fully committed to safeguarding India's interests across the Indo-Pacific. Consequently, there is much chance of India involving itself militarily in a Taiwan Strait crisis as there is of US paratroopers landing in Ladakh. Given a shared and ever-increasing threat from the PRC, there is significant mutuality of interest between India and the ROC. US is spreading itself all over, right? US pledges 40 million in aid to Pacific Islands to counter growing Chinese influence and India is doing its bit coinciding with PM trip, Indian warship docks in Durban. Then you have this geopolitical pulls US back to the Seychelles. So Indo-Pacific all over. And what do you have here? Why Beijing's balloon is going bust? You must hear this. By Ruchi Sharma. China's rise, rise is reversing. Its share of global GDP is falling for the first time since the Mao era. Further, its shrinking share of the world's worker also means a smaller share of growth. It says investors are pulling money out of China at record pace, which will add to pressures on the renminbi. Foreigners cut direct investment in Chinese factories with projects by 12 billion this year's third quarter. The first such drop since records began. Locals who flee troubled waters before foreigners are leaving too. On our terms, in our time, writes C. Raja Mohan. Don't hurry it up. India should not talk to China yet, even if Biden talks to Xi. Okay. He says, renewing political and economic engagement does not solve India's problem of rebuilding peace and tranquility on the disputed frontier. Only credible military arrangements can in, can. in any case, China is not promising to quickly restore peace on the border. If India resumes political and economic dialogue, that we should be no. Beijing merely calls for separating the border dispute from the rest of the relationship. Beijing's emphasis on putting the border dispute in its proper place, a euphemism for the back burner, is unacceptable to India. Limiting the economic exposure and suspending the political di dialogue are among the few cards Delhi has in persuading Beijing in to restore trust and stabilize the border. And all this, remember, she is desperate. He says when she went, she smiley face. On the, he says there was no joint statement and no progress report on the most sensitive areas, including Taiwan and tech export. This right, Seema Sirohi. As for she, he needed to show his party hierarchy. He could switch gears, de-escalate and woo US investors back with China's economy and slowing real estate, crashing and foreign capital fleeing. Foreign companies reportedly took out more than 160 billion in earnings over the last, uh, last six quarters. Thus a need for a somewhat normal relationship with the US. But Xi's speech to corporate America fell flat. He made no promises to stop raids against foreign businesses. Whether the agreements produce real results remains to be seen. Critics say the gains are thin, even illusory. Then she says she is rapidly working on a border deal with Bhutan while making no appreciable progress with India. Does it mean more pressure on India as elections loom for? Be prepared for that and say it is worth noting that while she was hinting at a new approach, China's military as usual was acting belligerent. A Chinese destroyer used sonar pulses against Australian divers in international waters of the Japanese coast. The divers were trying to untangle their frigates propeller from fishing nets. The Australian ship repeatedly warned the Chinese vessel, but to no avail. Folks, there it is. There. We have to be ready. APEC, ASEAN, also in play, India has made the right move. Three cheers, Jay.